Well, I'm not uh, like at the big city hall. When I went to the city clerk, it was different. I, I ended up bursting into tears because it's been four days and years of verbal abuse and crap and lies and being pushed around by the neighbor. And in my more paranormal moments, I want to blame all the neighbors. And I'm trying really hard to be charitable because the fact is I don't have evidence that two of the neighbors are involved just that I do know trying to be fair that the one neighbor did try to act like a mediator to de-escalate things and that's to be commended but uh, she was going to do what she wanted and that's all there is to it and I don't think that's the neighbor's fault really it's her fault entirely and I know this it's just I also know about how they tried to have my land taken from me when I was at Fort Polk <laughs> Um, but I don't know all the names involved with that. I just know what the neighbor told me. So that's also hearsay if you think about it. But the point, the point is I went into the city clerk and I ended up bursting into tears because all day at City Hall, it was a couple of people were willing to tell me what was going on and turn, finding out that what she's doing is well known. Everybody knows what she's doing. And uh, that, you know, you, you feel like the entire cities against you and I'm just like what am I did I move to the reservation and I didn't know it and it's still being run by the brown coats or something here um but and you know trying so hard not to fall into the trap but my parents did and everything and it's so hard not to do it to just start hating everyone it really is really hard and I'm struggling with it and it's really hurting my heart that I'm put into this position but um She knew what was going on. She took down. She's going to be calling code enforcement because the fence is up without a proper surveyor or permits or anything. And I, and I was just there to say, look, obviously I've got no one on my side, so I need to point that this mess that the contractors have left, please don't code enforce me about it because it's on my property because I didn't make the mess. I'm trying to get the mess to stop. And then I mentioned the dead tree. Let me show you the dead tree. Actually, there are videos up there of whenever the woodpeckers were living in it, which made it a uh, protected habitat. Well, not for all woodpeckers. I do know it's not for all woodpeckers, but I didn't know what kind of woodpeckers those were because I can't see so good. <laughs> Tried getting pictures so I could see, couldn't. But you could see their babies flying in and out. And, uh, and that was cute, you know. Uh, this is the tree in question. Now, this tree was beautiful and alive when we moved in. Here's one of the logs that's out of our way. And we were quoted. We've been given quotes multiple times from people who want to get money from us to remove it. But And the tree is mostly on our line. Uh, pretty sure it's enough that it's all, all our tree. So here's the line. This is literally the property line. Can I show you? No, all right. This is literally the plot property line. So it goes, but part of the tree trunk, just a sliver, is on her side. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's never been enough to raise a fuss until lately when people started using the law to harm me. And I know that if any part of a tree trunk crosses a property line, that tree is considered a shared tree. But I had already told my neighbor, who's been the most polite out of them, that uh, I would take care of it. And then I was quoted some crazy amounts. And then my parents died. My husband lost his job. You know, it's been just one nasty thing after another. But... Well, I was standing in the city clerk's uh, office telling her this is what's going on. And I said, let me address this tree. And I explained how we really are trying about the tree. There just happened to be a gentleman standing there who took my number because he's like, I have a friend who owns a tree trimming service and we will not quote you nearly as much. He said about 500, which, you know, come to th I do have an old quote in the house of 600 to for cut and removal and carrying away. At the time I didn't have 600 and now the number's no longer good. 
So it's looking like I will have to borrow money to to get the tree cut down, but at least it will be handled before it before a widow maker falls on someone or it falls on the house. So there's that. But so so currently I am out here. I was gonna wait for my friend Rebecca, but I like seeing this particular area trimmed. And as I said before, it was you know long guys trimming, haha, <laughs> funny, funny. Uh so I'm gonna get my my butterfly bushes freed. Because it's something to do. I really should be like working. I should be working on music making sure my instruments are good because I've got that living history project in just a few days I've got to drive to. I should be doing all that, but I don't think I'm going to be able to concentrate until I get these butterfly bushes free. My vision, because I've seen how big butterfly bushes can get, and this one started out so small just two years ago, and it has gotten very big from how small it was. My vision is these big, beautiful butterfly bushes. One, keeping the uh, cliff from falling in and Two, just making this area beautiful without and with less maintenance. That's my vision. And of course, this mimosa tree is just, I love a mimosa tree. I don't like them everywhere, but one for an accent, that's pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to get to work. I'll probably film what it looks like when I'm done.